Hey, Bashana, your favorite uncle is back. I did say that I'll be back. Well, today we're going to look at some quick tips on how to ace Mets Paper 1. Let's get to it. So, number one, know the structure of your paper. Paper 1 is structured the same way every single year. So you need to know what happens in each and every section and how many marks are allocated to each section. So let's take a quick dive into it, right? So if you look at um, the first section, the first section is always allocated to algebra. That's going to be equations and inequalities. And that's round about 25 marks. That's takeaway plus minus three marks, right? Those are your low hanging fruits, guys. Please, you really want to make sure that you master that section. You answer it as quickly as possible. You need to know things like factorization. You need to know how to use the quadratic formula. You need, you need to know your inequalities. You need to know um, things like your, uh, you know, how to factorize and so on. Now, you need to really make sure that you master that section. In fact, I always say that part of mathematics is kind of, you know, a precursor to every other thing that you are going to do, right? I mean, think about it. Even if you're going to do, let's say, uh, at a later stage, you're going to do calculus, you still need to know how to factorize. So it kind of gets you into the mood uh, if you want to look at it that way. So that's the first part. So you want to take about 30 minutes of that, uh, your first uh, time, right, into the paper. So the three hours, 30 minutes is allocated to question number one. Now, uh, number two, you're going to look at uh, patterns and sequences, right? So which means we're going to look at our linear sequence, otherwise called the arithmetic sequence. You are going to look at your quadratic sequence, but you're going to look at your geometric patterns as well, right? So I would advise, if you really want to make sure that you do well in mathematics, you know, not just practice, but also you can save time by knowing the formulae of by heart, okay? I know some of you are thinking, ah, but Malume, how am I going to do that? Practice, practice, practice. I know the formulas from the top of my head because I practice them as often as possible. And now, guys, the third section, finance, growth, and decay. This is where we're going to look at, you know, financial mathematics. Now, of course, uh, whilst financial mathematics is a lot of reading, there's a lot of words to deal with. But I would say to you, focus on two things if you're in grade, grade 12, right? You're going to look at the compound formula, right? Um, uh, compound interest formula, that is. And you're going to look at sinking funds in particular, right? Now, I've got a video where I walk you through just the financial meds section and in particular sinking funds. But also what you want to focus on is the formula of annuities. You have to know the difference between your future value formula, where we are looking at things like investments and so on, and the present value formula, where we are looking at loans. But again, guys, I take you through that, especially looking at the balance of a loan. Guys, if you focus on that, I mean, that's about, well, 15 marks, give or take, and you need to make sure that you can be able to answer that. But please don't stress if that's not your strongest section, because I'm about to tell you the next section, which is functions and graphs. Now, this is where we can collect a lot of marks, guys. Look, this is the biggest section in Matt's paper one. So you want to make sure that you can collect as many marks as possible on functions. You need to know your parabolas uh, between your hyperbolas, your uh, linear functions, as well as any other function. And guys, I do say this is the bis biggest section, right? It is, um, you know, you find it in two sections. One, you're going to apply it in all the graphs that I've uh, listed, but remember, that also the calculus graph, which means the cubic function, is also part of that. So in essence, about a third of Matt's paper one 
is actually focused on functions. Now, guys, if you can't answer the higher order questions as yet, ah, come on, don't stress. I've got an entire playlist on functions and you can be able to master that section. Now, if you came to me the day before the exam, which I hope you don't, hey, and you said to me, Malome, I cannot do anything on math. I would say to you, focus on functions. And so make sure that that's one section that you can master. And now the last section that will be on paper one. So you're looking at probability, right? Now you're going to have to learn things like, you know, your Venn diagrams, your tree diagrams and how to work around that. But guys, in probability, there are just these terms and terminology that you need to actually master. Things like, you know, um, independence, right? When we talk about independent variables, right? I take you through this in my videos on probability. So things like when we talk independence, that's the, the, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Uh, things like mutual exclusivity, where we say that the probability of A and B is equal to zero. Now, all of these things, we usually apply them when it comes to the general rule of probability. Now, guys, whilst you think that this is a bad section and, you know, m m many of you might not necessarily uh, master this, but it is not impossible. If you think it's not really your strength, look, go into my video. There's a summary that I did on probability and you might want to look at that video. You'll change your mind, I promise you. All right, I hope that you do find it extremely helpful. Now, the last part on probability is on the fundamental counting principles. So guys, here's what I'm asking you not to do. Don't waste time learning the formulae on the fundamental counting principle. There's an easier way in which I help you to navigate this section, right? by drawing your, the structure of your question, right? And this makes it so much easier so that you can be able to get the questions. Now, some of the questions, hey, they might be a little bit on the difficult end, but please don't stress. I want you guys to note that the structure of the Mets paper one, okay, of Mets paper one rather, is really not that bad, right? So what I want you to do going into these exams, you really want to make sure that you focus on the areas in which you are strongest. By the time that you write your paper, you would have established in which area are you strongest in. And so when you go into the exam, you are really going to focus on the areas, you're going to start rather on the areas that you know that you are strongest in. And you're going to really make sure that you start there and you gravitate more and more towards the areas where you know that, ah, well, is not make sure on that particular area. And as a result, you're going to actually answer those questions last. And finally, guys, Matt's paper one is truly not that bad. I've given you just a rundown on how it is structured. Now, I just want to say to you, you really want to make sure that you master that paper one because, well, paper two can be slightly tricky, but it's not impossible. Guys, you've got this. As you go into the exam, I want you to be confident, uh, confident rather in your ability to learn, right? And I want you guys to maximize on the videos that I've curated to really ensure that you can really get those last, uh, you know, sections, those bit of sections that you still don't know uh, as much that you're not strong in, just to make sure that you've got that on lock. Now, here's my last tip for Matt's Paper 1. I really want you guys, as you prepare for Matt's Paper 1, to ensure that you actually do as many time trials as possible. What do I mean? I've given you a breakdown of each section. So for instance, as you prepare towards your final exams, right? 
you're going to now sit down, let's say with the, the 2022 paper, 2023 exam, 2024, let's say June exam, and you're going to answer only the algebra equations and inequality section. That's 25 marks. So make sure that you put yourself under extreme pressure with time. So put a clock next to you, right? You're going to use that time, allocate 30 minutes. And guys, once that 30 minutes is up, stop. Because then that will give you feedback as to whether you are mastering that section. Now, what you also want to do is after you've allocated that time, you write within the time that you've allocated, see if you are able to complete that section. If you were not able to complete that section, then it means that you need a little bit more practice, right? Of course, you can always refer to the videos as you practice so that you are able to just have a, you know, you are as confident as possible in that section. Right, now, after you have written that exam, you're going to now mark yourself. It is important, guys. That is a part that will give you feedback. You will know whether, how well you've done, right? Out of the 25 marks in each, in that section, right? Well, if you've gotten about 20 marks out of the 25, then it means that you're fairly confident in that section. And look at the sections as it by the side. You know the sections that really give you guys a little bit of a hard time, right? So if inequalities is that section, then you know that you need to pay a little bit more attention. And you are going to do this for each and every section uh, as you go along for uh, uh, you know your patterns and sequences. You're going to do the same, allocate the time. And guys, you cannot go into the exam. And I'll repeat this. You may not go into the exam without having set through at least two, three hour time trials. Meaning you are going to test yourself. Will you be able to complete the full question paper within three hours? And if you are still not able to do that, then it means that you have to then have a strategy of how you're going to go into the exam and maximize, try and maximize as much as possible on the questions where you've got as many uh, you know, marks as possible. So pick up the marks on the easy questions and then gravitate towards the more difficult sections. Now, in my last video, I told you guys that you, you know, you put uh, that 10 second rule, right? So the 10 second rule is where you say, if I am answering a question and I don't know what to do within the first 10 seconds, perhaps I might want to go to the next question, right? And so what you do is that you save time, you bank that time so that you can come back to the question much later. And what that does is that it ensures that you can be able to finish your entire paper. Guys, you've got this. I know that as you go into the exam, Maths Paper 1 will be a walk in the park. But for those of you that are still struggling, please guys, I don't want you to lose confidence in yourselves, right? Perhaps this year may have had a lot of bumps, may have had a lot of challenges. Please look into some of our programs that we've got and perhaps you may want to rewrite next year or whatever the case may be. But we've got programs that we've curated for you so that you can, we can ensure that you do better and eventually excel in mathematics. Thank you for your time, guys. I hope that you will enjoy this video and that you will look forward to another video that I will do on Maths Paper 2. I will also walk you through physical science as well. It's been a pleasure being with you. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop shop.